Hey, welcome to Dwayne's World. That's right, Dwayne's World, the podcast, and it's me, Dwayne, the booze and blogger. Um, I decided to uh, do another podcast because, you know what, it is kind of fun just talking about shit. And I'm, I mean, it's nice when I have somebody to talk to, but I spend so much time alone that I'm actually getting kind of used to talking to myself. Uh, yeah, so if you want, subscribe to my channel. I can use more subscribers, share my videos. Uh, also, you can go online and check me out on Spotify and Apple under the podcast sections. Uh, it will be up there. Well, if you're listening to this, it's probably up there already. So I let's get on to some news. Uh, I was uh, I like to go through the news and every once in a while I'll find something that really surprises the crap out of me. And I found I came across a story of Elvira. Everybody knows um, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. She's been she's been around for like ever. She used to have TV show and stuff. Uh, you know that sexy, sexy uh, witch like woman. Uh, her real name is Cassandra Peterson. And she's still really, really sexy, by the way. And she's not that young. But anyways, uh, she um, she came out as a lesbian recently. And it's funny because she posted that when she came out as a lesbian, it, it did hit her subscriber count hard. And she lost about 11,000 horny old men as followers. That's funny. Like, come on, you got to find that funny. Uh, she says that she she lost the viewers because it took away their fantasy that they would ever get to get with her. And uh, she also said that they never would have got with her anyways. But but regardless, it's, it is funny. Now, me thinking like this, or me being me, I guess, I was wondering. So she comes out as a lesbian. She's super smoking hot. Even at this age, she's still hot. Uh, but even if she was a lesbian, like she's been with her partner for 19 years. Uh, so even back then, doesn't her being a lesbian kind of enhance the fantasy guys? I don't know. There's a lot of guys with those fantasies. And uh, wouldn't that make it better? Why would you, Why would you? you know, delete her? Thank God she came out, though. Because, like, I mean... It's finally nice that she gets to be her authentic self. There, like now she doesn't have to hide and worry about subscribers and people following her and all that other crap. She just gets to live. Uh, she's done books. She wrote a book and and stuff. And now she's just now she's just her. And she says, for the first time in my life, I'm with someone who makes me feel safe, blessed, and truly loved. So she's good for her. Really, really good for you. Other news. Um, so now they're saying that uh, that uh, masks, the cloth masks, aren't aren't doing the trick for uh, COVID and stuff. People have said that for God. Ever since the uh, thing this happened, but now you've got them saying it, the doctors saying it, and people actually who are in the know saying it, not just conspiracy theorists or other people. And uh, they're saying that the masks aren't any good. Everybody should be wearing an N95. Yada yada yada. So we have totally fucked up this this uh, COVID thing, haven't we? And. The question, a question I have is if these masks aren't, to, aren't working or aren't helping anything, why in the hell are we still wearing them? This, that's just a simple question um, that I, I have no answer for, but we're still wearing them and apparently they're doing no good. So I don't know. Is that not like, you know, masturbating and wearing a condom so you don't get somebody pregnant like i mean isn't it about the same thing like it's unbelievable this covid thing is driving me nuts i know it's driving everybody crazy but but it's it's just they keep changing the rules the rules don't make any sense anymore if you're this you gotta 
isolate for this many days. But if you've done this, you got to isolate for this many days. They're talking in double speak. People are losing their jobs. Um, you got you still got the fight between the vaxxed and the unvaxxed, which is, you know, it's never going to end that way. It's never going to stop. They're always going to be fighting back and forth. Me, I'm vaxxed. Yep. I've also spent the last five days in isolation. Why? You know, because I came in very, very close contact with a person with COVID. And uh, we had to make sure that I wasn't going to be transmitting the disease all over everybody else. Now, that's the other thing is that, that the person who had COVID had both their shots and still got it. So, like, I mean, we knew that you can still get COVID even though you're vaccinated. Now. We also know that with the vaccination, it, le- it, can, it can lessen the effects of it. But I, I don't think it's just, honestly, I don't think it's just the uh, COVID vaccine that helps you. I think if you've got a strong immune system, you're going to fight this off anyways. Uh, but I still suggest you get vaccinated. But I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get my booster too. Uh, I've, I've been hemming and hawing about it for a while. And this little brush, I think I'm just going to get the booster and say, fuck it. If uh, I don't get it, great. If I get it and it only causes mild man cold symptoms, who cares? Uh, Really? Like the person who got it, he had very, very minimum, very minimum symptoms uh, because we think because of the vaccine and we're going to believe in that. Okay. If you. If you don't believe in that, that's fine. That's your opinion, okay? And everybody's got their own opinion. And and that's fine. Uh, But I'm going with the opinion that he had his vaccinations and it hit him a lot less than it hit a lot of other people. And I know people who have gotten gotten COVID who didn't have the vaccinations and they felt like they were dying. So is there a difference between getting the vaccination and not getting the vaccination? I don't know. Nobody really for sure knows, but all I can say is that I'm believing in it, okay? It sort of goes like, it sort of goes like, uh, remember in the back and I don't know when they, they're, they might still be out there. Remember the deer whistles you used to put on your cars so that it would alert a deer or wildlife when you're coming so they wouldn't run out in front of you? Did they work? Did they not work? I don't know. But I can tell you one thing, that the only deer I have ever hit with my car was the only car that didn't have a deer whistle on it. Coincidence, maybe? Maybe I just pushed my luck at the time. But but yeah, so it's one of those things in life that you can't really be sure about. And if the vaccine's not going to hurt you, why worry about it? Like I've got, I used to hate the idea of getting the flu vaccine, but then I developed my heart problem and my, I'm immuno immunocompromised and the doctors are pushing it. Uh, the nurses are pushing it, pushing me for it. My pharmacist, she was pushing me to get it. So finally I gave in and I got it. That's fine. Um, and then after that, I got a shingles vaccine which is good. I really hope that one works because I see shingles as a really painful friggin' thing and I really don't want it. Uh, and then she got me the pneumonia shot. Now that's the shot that I like uh, because I've had pneumonia a lot in my lifetime and I haven't had it since the shot. Touch wood. Um, but could that pneumonia shot have helped me too through COVID? Uh, you think, right? COVID and pneumonia have a lot of the same symptoms, your lungs and can't breathe and all that other stuff. So I know a lot of people way smarter than me have been looking into COVID and stuff, but have they ever considered the pneumonia vaccine as a, to fight COVID? I don't know. Eh, they probably won't. It's not like anybody, uh, any doctors are listening to the booze and blogger. Let's, speaking about COVID, let's get into some sports. Everybody knows about Novak Djokovic's um, tennis problems in uh, 
in Australia, how they, uh, how he flew all the way down there at, to because he had an exemption to play or to enter the country because he had had COVID in December, so that he got an, ex- an exemption to fly in there. And then he gets there and gets into detention, and they took his exemption away because having COVID before isn't a good enough excuse for an exemption. Makes sense. Um, now, I, I, I'm kind of not, I don't know. I'm just kind of on the fence here because they should, I don't think he should have flown down there and then got there and they went, no, nope, turn around, and go home. The, that's bullshit. Like, I mean, the guy flew for, what is it? 25 hours. I don't know how far it is from Serbia to Australia, but but he gets there all ready to play because of this exemption. And then the Australian people say, no, you can't play because you can't come into the country because, you know, uh, you're not vaccinated. And, and we know the vaccination, not having a vaccination can hinder some of your, the things you want to do in life. Right. For uh, remember Quebecers, fuck, they can't even uh, go buy pot or pot or alcohol because if they're not vaxxed. And there's a lot more things, but uh, we all I've uh, I've talked about Quebec like crazy, but yeah. So we all know that not getting the vaccine can hinder you. In Ontario, you can't go into a restaurant, you know. So the and Australia's always been great with the COVID thing. For somehow they were the first to get rid of it, and everything else. Their numbers are going back up. They they just hit like a million COVID cases f- for the entire. Uh, pandemic that's pretty freaking amazing uh but they have very very strict rules when it comes to coming into their country and so based on that why did they make like why did they let him fly there why didn't they just tell him he wasn't welcome and his exemption didn't work it would have saved a lot of time and effort but then there's the and then there's the other part where good for you australia not bowing down to a major sporting event or not bowing down to somebody famous or an amazing athlete or whatever. You're not bowing down. You're sticking to the rules. Everybody gets, you know, everybody should have to follow the rules. So like, I mean, like I said, I'm on the fence about it because they are sticking to the rules. They don't give two shits about who you are. If you're not vaccinated, you're not following their rules. Goodbye. And you got to kind of applaud them for, for standing up for themselves. Now, I do, like I said, I do think it's unfair that he can't play. He's had COVID, uh, but the rules are the rules. And I am honestly, I am big on rules. Um, if they're rule there, follow it. And if you don't want to follow it, just don't go there or just don't break the rule or, or whatever. So good for you, Australia, for standing up to yourself. Um I know John McEnroe threw a temper tantrum about him flying down there and then being told he couldn't play. And that's, that's Max. Uh, that's his point of view. And I do, I, I kind of agree, but I think, like I said, I think they should have said no right off the bat, not changed their mind, not, not given an exemption, nothing. Just said, no, you're not vaccinated. You're not coming. Um, and then all this shit would end. Right. It wouldn't have happened in the first place and it wouldn't be a news story Uh, moving on. So we just got to the uh, football playoffs last weekend. Wildcard games, by the way, the games were shitty. Uh, Most of them were absolute blowouts and uh, that kind of sucked. At least this weekend, hopefully. Hopefully uh, the football is a little better, but I wanted to bring up a player. uh, Cam Akers running back for the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, He tore his Achilles tendon and he was only off the field for 173 days. That is a, that can be a career ender. Um, But this guy, man, persevered, went through it, did everything he was told to do. uh, And he came back and what a game he played on Sunday. Holy crap. Um, or Monday, sorry. Uh, Holy crap. He ran like crazy. You'd never know he was even hurt. And this guy, like almost w- didn't make it back to football. Like his injury was so severe that it could have ended his career. And he comes back and he's like, even stronger, man, athletes are amazing. Aren't they? 
Holy crap. Yeah, so uh, make sure you stick around or you watch your uh, football this Saturday and Sunday. We've got four games, so, I mean, that's easy. Uh, what else we're going to talk about today? Oh, what about the crazy girl racing down the uh, Rideau River in her car? They think she might have started from uh, Kempville and made it all the way to Manatick. And apparently she was doing speeds up to 100 kilometers an hour. Now everybody has seen the picture of her, of her when her car hit a hole or broke through the ice and she's standing on the trunk doing a selfie and stuff. And yesterday people were saying that maybe she has mental illness, that's why she did it. Okay, you can think that. I don't. I really don't think that. I think she was doing it for social media, I think it was maybe a TikTok video or at least Instagram. I know that picture went to Instagram. It had to have, uh, you know, YouTube, whatever. And it's, again, another one of those selfish millennials. She didn't think about what could happen if she fell through and somebody would have had to save her life. What if they had a, had a drowned when they were saving her life? Like, Stupid, stupid, stupid. And and like I said, I, I'm pretty sure it was for her 15 minutes of fame. She got her 15 minutes of fame. Um, she And when the rescuers rescued her, she laughed and was smiling and said that she would, she would do it again in a minute. And it's like, <sighs> yes, you entitled little shit. You've lost your car. You're being charged with reckless driving. And you would do it again. Lock her up. I don't give a shit if she's got mental illness or not. Lock her up. She's a danger to society uh, if she's going to think this way. That's the thing about social media and all these people wanting to become influencers. They uh, stop. Use your fucking brain for a change. Like, I mean, that's the problem. And that's the difference between this generation and my generation. I'm a I'm a. Gen Xer, by the way, I'm not. I'm not a baby boomer. Um, we're a little bit more free, but that's the problem with world now. Is people aren't thinking, think logically, just a little bit, and it can save you doing stupid shit like that. Like, I mean, come on. Uh, Fifteen minutes of fame ain't worth kill, having somebody die trying to save you, or you're dying. It just isn't worth it. I hope our uh, all our American, our uh, all our American friends enjoyed Martin Luther King Day. It was Martin Luther King Day on Monday, the seventeenth. Uh, it happens every what third Monday of every year. So it's such a great tradition that everybody still celebrates the great that great civil rights leader. I, I Martin Martin Luther King was an amazing human being. Not only the fact that he was the youngest person to ever win a Nobel Prize at 35 years old, but just the fact that he believed in everybody and he believed in that we could accomplish peace. And right now, I'm I think we need somebody like him around to save the world because there's too much, too many people who are in for it themselves and not they don't think about helping other people. But you know. That's my that's my opinion. Uh, he was such a great, great person, and the world could use another one. Speaking about helping other people, too, uh, Monday, we got that huge, huge snowstorm here in eastern Ontario. And uh, the thing I was the most proud to see online was that people were helping each other, you know, uh, dig each other out of the snow. There was a lot of friggin' snow. I didn't realize it till I went out to my truck today and realized there was like three feet of snow on top of it. Um, but it was so nice. It was it like in Smith Falls, the community got together. They had people walking down the roads, shoveling people's driveways for free. And you had guys with plows helping people out for free. Uh, Dougie Boy, he was driving around with his truck in Toronto. He's he pulled some people out of the ditch with his truck. He helped shovel people out. Great job, Dougie. Um, 
I don't care what we all think about Doug, Doug, but um, I think he's, I think he's a good dude. Uh, he, I don't think his advisors are very great, but I think Doug's a good dude. Honestly, um, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but uh, maybe it's just all a thing so that, you know, he can get more votes, whatever. I don't, but honestly, I think Dougie is a decent human being and he's, following the advice of his advisors and sometimes he's you know you got to go against their advice but you didn't see trudeau out shoveling or pulling people out with a truck i mean he's driving around on a limo right so i think dougie's just one of us you know common man he's not an elitist sure he's got money and sure, maybe maybe I'm wrong, but um, he got put into it, thrown into such a shitty situation, like with this whole COVID thing, that <sighs> he never really got a chance. Um, I don't care. I'm going to vote for him again uh, because I think he's a nice. I do. I think he's a good guy, and he he he. I genuinely think he cares, um, and it's nice to see people care, especially our leaders. Anyways, I think I've babbled on enough today, so take care of yourselves. Uh, remember, subscribe to my channel and check me out on Spotify or Apple. I'll be back next Wednesday. I'm sure I'll find some weird news to read about and uh, <laughs> and uh, just come back and talk about that or just sit here and shoot the shit with, well, myself, but I am talking to you, folk. Take care of yourselves and remember the most important thing in life. Don't be a fucking asshole. Take her easy.